All right, we call the meeting to order at 7.01. Uh, 7.01 Secretary Dean Treasurer, who is delayed in coming here, has the minutes of the May 4th meeting and the Treasurer's report, so we will defer that until she arrives, since we can't look at that. Um, so, I'm going to start right in on number four. This is Jerry, right? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, <coughs> With all these folders. Here's a folder. <clears throat> Is uh, Steve McKay here tonight? I am. Uh, the board would like to offer a public thank you to you for inspiring us to look into this bond refinancing. Um, I had a correspondence with Robert Giroux, who is the uh, <coughs> Robert Giroux is the officer of the Vermont Municipal Bond Bank. You had also talked with him earlier. Um, first, I got a statement from the United States Department of Agricultural Rural Development on the statement of our loan account. Our loan, final year of loan is 2038, and the loan was given out 10.01.98, so it's a 40-year loan, not a 30-year loan. Uh, the interest rate is 4.75%, which uh, is higher than it currently is. Uh, payments are 13238 twice a year. So, um, turns out that the Vermont Municipal Bond Bank issues bonds once a year and they issue them on July 1st of that year and their deadline for applying which is an elaborate process <clears throat> is May 15th so we missed this year so we cannot apply for a uh, refinancing until a year from now or until May 15th of next year. <clears throat> um, Robert Giroux sent me an estimated debt service schedule. He sent it to me in two ways. One was kind of a floating interest rate, and the other was a fixed interest rate. If we were to be refinancing right now, the uh, Bond rate is 3.73%, and so here's the information that I got. No, that's a different issue. Um, okay. Anyway. If we were refinancing right now, it would be a yearly payment of 11686 uh, as opposed to 13280 so it would be approximately uh, $1,583, something like that, or 3000 a year less. So nobody knows what the bond rate <coughs> will be a year from now. Um, hasn't gone up much in the last five years, but everybody's talking about interest rates. When are they going to change? So we would just, the only thing that we could say is if we refinance next year, it would be a year earlier than if we refinanced the following year. But this could potentially lead to a yearly savings of uh, $3,000 to the water system, which would be excellent, and uh, the board will pursue that. Uh, one of the requirements of a refinancing is some kind of an elaborate audit, which he had the name of, and I can't quote you the name of it, 
and he said this kind of audit costs between five and seven thousand dollars. But he also said we don't usually refinance such a so-called small amount. We have three hundred and forty-eight thousand seven hundred still owed, and the bonds that they typically issue are for millions, like the sewer system for the town of Pownall is twenty-six million or something like that. So he said, I don't know, but he said, you could just take that 5000 rather than taking it out of a pocket that you don't have any and add it on to the end of the bond. Um, so instead of financing 348700 we would finance 353700 and pay off, have the 5000 to pay the accountants for the required uh, audit. So uh, that's a positive for the future, but doesn't bring us any money right now. Uh, is there any questions about this bond refinance? Have I explained it clearly enough? Was uh, the option of extending the bond talked about, or because I know that the numbers that I gave you were based on the 30 year, because that's what we thought it was at the time, but. Well, you, you had given us like a 20-year bond, and we were just mistaken. We thought we had 13 years, we still have 23 years. So Bob Giroux, he s wrote this quote, which is 3,000 a year or less if we could get the interest rate right now, for 22 years, starting next July 1st, 2016. So that would take us to 2038 when the original bond. When I said to him, Jesus, this is a 40 year bond, he said, well, USDA does that. They do that or they used to do that or something like that. So your quote of 20 years, this quote of 22 years is pretty close. Sure, sure. But what, what, what my question was, was can you get it extended for longer than the original duration of the bond? Because that would increase the savings. I mean, it would add another 10 years onto it, but that would add the savings probably at least double of what it was, or what the numbers that you well, put there. I guess it's possible, but this board in discussion about even, <laughs> we had a discussion under false information, thinking we had a 30 year bond. Sure and talking about extending it beyond 30 years when we have a system that's supposed to last 30 years, by 2038 there may be some large extensive repairs needed to be done to the system, in which case a new bond might be required. So, Speaking only for myself as a member of the board, I would not, I don't even like a 40-year bond on a 30-year system, but maybe it's a 40-year system. I don't know. I do know pump isn't going to last forever. We've already replaced the computers 12 years in, you know, or 13 years in, four years ago, three years ago. Everything gets old. so. I don't know, are there any other board members like to make a comment about extending beyond a 40-year bond? I think we'd have to see what the, you know, the stipulations are and you know, have some actual figures before we could even really discuss it with any type of positive or negative yeah, discussion. We're going to have to work on this in the next year. Um, Bob Giroux did say another thing. He said, well, you could go to a bank. You don't have to go to this bond thing, but a bank will not guarantee an interest rate beyond 10 years. So you could get a maybe 3.15 or something like that, but in 10 years, who knows what the interest rate was going to be. And he gave me two quotes. One was kind of a floating interest rate. I don't quite understand it, but the other was a fixed interest rate of 3.73%. And uh, in my opinion, we want fixed. Absolutely. Not, not yeah. whatever the heck's going to happen in 10 years for a 22-year bond. <clears throat> That's my opinion. 
Uh, any other comments about the bond refinancing? Okay. Um, we are going, the board is going to vote tonight on whether to proceed with a solar array on the wellhead site. Um, as was discussed at last month's meeting, the legislature has amended the rules for the siting of solar arrays, specifically the setback requirement from a paved road. Um, Ralph, could you tell me exactly what the setback is from the center of a paved road? Do you know what that is? Yep. So, um, I think last Thursday or Friday maybe, <clears throat> uh, H40, or the reset bill, was signed, signed into law. And um, I believe I have the final copy of what was actually signed. This was a Senate version, um, and I have pages 8 through 14 here. And um, what they've done is a number of different things. They've, there's other stuff in this bill that has nothing to do with solar siting, but there's a solar siting section for the last uh, six pages. And as far as, as setbacks and screening are concerned, for an array of the size that we have now proposed, the setbacks, it says that the um, minimum setbacks shall be from a state or municipal highway measuring from the edge of the traveled way, not the center line, but the edge of the, of the pavement, I guess, on Route 346 in this case. Um, 40 feet for a facility with a plant capacity less than or equal to 150 kilowatts. But greater than 15 kilowatts, so that's that's the um, the setback that we're talking about here. The array that had been proposed earlier would require setbacks of 100 feet, but uh, that's not what we're talking about anymore. That would be the 375 kilowatt array, right? And then um, it, uh, 25 feet for a facility with a plant capacity less than or equal to 150 kW. Um, this, is, this is from uh, property boundaries, excuse me. So from each property boundary that's not a state or municipal highway, 25 feet for a facility with a plant capacity less than or equal to 150 kW, but greater than 15 kW. So that's the, then there's a whole other part on screening and the role of the, the local, basically select board, local elected body. But that's what we have for setbacks. Okay, so that would be 40 feet from both Route 346 and um, Lincoln Street. I think it's a town, not a... Lincoln Street is a town. Yeah, but he's, he said state. Or it's a state or municipal highway. Municipal, okay. Yep. So let's go to both. Okay. So Lincoln, even though it's a P, uh, Lincoln Street's a dirt road, but it's the edge of the travel way. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Because of this increased setback, the uh, developer um, that Ralph represents, Green Lantern Group, has changed their proposal of what they're willing to install at no cost to the uh, fire district to a 150 kilowatt solar array, which would be sited all north and west of the pump house. So there would be no solar panels south of the pump house or the 125 foot radius around the well pit. I have a paper that the undersigned voters would like to give, rate payers would like to give you at this time before you make a vote. All right. Says we, the undersigned, hereby request that the fire district number two hold an informational meeting and vote for ratepayers to approve or deny entering into a contract with Green Lantern for a solar array on the wellhead property located on Route 346 in Palmer Vermont. We request this as per the state's guidelines and the district's bylaws of having 5% of the ratepayer signatures as below. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. So five percent of a hundred would be five, and five percent of forty-six would be two and a half. So if we just look in our bylaws and see what that's maybe I can read that. Bylaws and ordinances. <coughs> at any meeting of the fire district shall constitute a quorum. If a quorum is present, the affirmative vote of the majority of members present at the meeting shall be the act of the fire district unless the vote of a greater number is required by statute. If there are no resident voters present, the Prudential Committee shall continue to conduct the meeting and transact business as outlined in Article 5. two-thirds of the fire district members present at a special meeting convened for this purpose and at which a quorum is present. Uh, Cindy, mm -hmm. you're familiar with the, um, um, we've had a request by undersigned eight persons. Um, I'm just going to read their names and you tell me if you send bills to them, okay? okay. Uh, Dorothy K. Baker. Yes. Dolores Kimball. Yes. William Nichols. Yes. James Brookman. Yes. Penny O'Dell. Yes. Kathy Rosati. Yes. Steve McKay. Yes. And Mark Smith. Yes. Well, I guess you're close enough to 5% that we're going to have to take this into Consideration. So this request of eight persons is that the fire district hold an informational meeting and vote for ratepayers to approve or deny entering into a contract with Green Lantern <coughs> for a solar array on the Wellhead property located on Route 346 in Palm Vermont. We request this as per the state's guidelines and the district's bylaws of having 5% of the ratepayer signatures as below. <coughs> okay. Uh, does any board members have any comment about this so far? So was that, wasn't the bylaws with the 5%? I don't see anything about 5%. But I, I don't know. I don't have all the laws of the state of Vermont. Um, the town, the town does five percent. The town does the five percent. All, right. all the voters, yeah, per petition, put something on the ballot. Um, Cindy, we send out eighty-three bills. But do we know how many hookups we have? Do we have 146 hookups, something like that? 143? I mean, if we had 150, then 7.5 would be 5% of 150. So we have 8 here. All right. Is there a question? Like, I have three spots down here. But I don't live down in this, I don't live here. I live up in the mountain. 
but I do pay on three spots down here, but I'm not a resident of the valley, so to speak, the good system. I don't live down here, All right. but I pay for three spots. If we were to have a boat here, would I have a voting right? Because I did not have well, a residence here? I guess they would have, I, I, you're a rate payer. Okay. That's rate payer. Yeah, I believe so. I, you'd have, you'd have three votes too, right? Okay, I'm just questioning that I physically I don't, don't think you would live here. Well, let's take mm -hmm. the Green Mountain Trailer Park. We get paid by Brian Millard, who pays for, I think, 26 trailers. Well, there's 29 pads and 23, I don't know exactly the number, because he ch you know, it changes as I install and... This has always been a question in the past. But it seems to me there would be every person that's paying a bill of 115 to Brian Millard would have a vote. But I'm not making the laws of the state of Vermont here. Right. This is a question. This, this petition that was just brought up, now this is to have another informational meeting and then a vote on it. Uh, I thought we already discussed this. So did I. I'm just reading the document that was presented. So to how us. many informational meetings do we have to have? And what does that mean if you have an informational meeting? You don't take a vote after that. And if you did take a vote, is just the people present or are you going to have uh, Ballot, uh, ballot sent out to every rate payer to sign? I, I don't understand no, why not? where we're going with no, this they, again. And we, I, thought, I thought you said that the board was going to make a decision. Anyway, that's what you guys are up here for. Yeah, but that's the purpose of the petition, the petition not to do that. And it wasn't presented last time because last time the laws were not established yet. And we didn't have a confirmation on what was actually going to happen. Well, they have bylaws established. <clears throat> Not the bylaws, the legislation that was established in the past few weeks for the by or for the state of Vermont to have the setbacks from the road. So now that the legislation that the legislation has been established, it was presented last time as it could be a possibility that they were thinking of. But now, since they can't do anything else, this is the only option that there is. At this time, I thought it was on the agenda to present what that option is. And then, just like last month, when I made my pitch, the board got a month. It seems to me that it would only be fair to make the pitch and then have the vote with the people that it's actually going to impact. Um, are you comfortable, as you say, to make your pitch now? What are, what are your objections? I don't want to make any pitch, sir. I, I was simply stating that last week, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> last month when I brought suggestions to the board, the board uh, asked if uh, there could be time to discuss amongst the board the decisions that were going to be made about the proposal, which is the same principle as what's happening today. The proposal is being stated that it's going to be that this is what the board and Green Lantern would like to do and the same courtesy or respect should be given to the ratepayers to think about it for a month or however long until you deem the meeting necessary and then at that time involve us in the decision to make this final or not. Um, well, I'm Here's what here's and I I agree with Harold. We've had a lot of informational meetings. I was going to present again the description of the current proposal. Um, so I'd like to continue with that. I would like to ask the board to vote on whether they agree on that proposal and then we can have a meeting, perhaps a special meeting in two weeks or at a time to be set where, I mean, we have to have a vote in person. 
and the vote has to be one person, one rate payer. You can't be mailing out ballots. There's lots of opportunity for fraud and who signs the ballot and all that. So I, I guess we would just have to mail out an invitation to all rate payers, send 26 to Brian Millard, you know, or however many he has, and uh, there are some rate payers who have like three apartments or four apartments, and invite them to a meeting, and then we would have our vote. And the advantages and disadvantages, I guess that's it. Um, Ralph, was there anything in this legislation about, about, I thought that the legislation suggested that municipal officers such as selectmen could, I mean the, the amendments of this solar siting thing were to increase some kind of input from people who, who were having these cited in their communities. Um, but I wasn't up in Montpelier when they argued it, and uh, it's what I thought the bill. Um, the what so described was uh, that officers of the town where a thing was cited could have a Say, yes, sir. Well, let's put it this way. You're not the only people that really have an authority in Pommel are the people who get on the ballot and the vote is vote for. You start with selectmen, the town clerk, the suburb. I don't know exactly how your board comes to be, but none of us in this room, this town, ever voted for you. But you do have your own funding, you do have your own board. Are you a separate entity? Then, say the selectmen, as, as being on the planning board, you're appointed. As being on the DRB, you're appointed at the discretion of the selectmen, who are the people that we actually vote for. They have the power to have meetings right. and set agendas. I, I don't know where you people fall between Well, I'll tracks. tell you where we fall. Okay. Um, these last three or four meetings where we've had as many as 20 people, is 20, 19 more people than we've ever had at a meeting. Uh, let me finish, please, okay? My question is, do you think really that you small members of the board have the legal and the moral right to make decisions for a hundred and however many people use this system for 10, 20 years for an ugly, which we're saying it's ugly, it's dirty, it should not be over a town water system. You say yes, it's all over your face. You don't agree with us when we disagree with you. But do you really think you have the moral and the legal right to make this decision? Uh, absolutely. I yes. say no, I but say I'm yes. only one. Well, I would, may I answer Jim's question? Which was, Certainly how may. did these people get on the board? The board was established in 1998, and there were three people on the board, Brian Quinn being one of them, Melody Canavan, and I believe Sharon Nichols, but I'm not sure about that. As people <laughs> have, when I came on the board, I took Harold Barney's place. Harold retired, and the remaining board members appointed me. There was nobody to vote. There's nobody that ever has come to our meetings. So regardless of that, so every board member has been accepted and appointed by previous <coughs> board members, people that show up at the, the quorum of three. Now, you ask, do we have the authority? We have the authority to bill people for water, to shut off their water when they don't pay the bill, 
to pay to repair things and to govern and shepherd this water system and I think we have the authority to act in the best interests. I mean, I can read you the bylaws. I will read you the bylaws, okay? That's fine. But I'm saying, you're, unless you're not acting in the best interest. So it's, but that's your, that's your opinion. opinion. That's yes. your opinion. Yes, it is. That's what I stated. It's so also not by your opinion. house, though. But there's a lot more of us. As a matter of fact, not agree by my house is the water tank. I look out my window and I see what looks like a flying saucer. Does it make a humming noise all day? Um, no, it's quiet. This isn't going to make a humming noise that you're going to hear either. Would you set a sawmill over that? Hey Jim, let me say this to you, okay? Do you know the racetrack here in, in town? How many, how many solar panels are sitting on that? They're sitting on top of the water system too, Jim. No. Yeah. No, yes. not my water system. Yeah, it's their water system. system. Which no. they do not it's use. The same aquifer is the same aquifer. It's like a big bathtub you don't filled know with that. gravel. You're saying something that you don't know. No, I do know. This this is, we proved exactly. it to you. We proved it to you with the geo, geological studies that were done. We read them to you. <laughs> we read them to you. But I still say, why would you work this junk on top of it? It's not junk. It's a money-making, benign, electricity-generating solar array. It's not yeah, junk. It's not dirty. A penny for you and a hundred for us. No, the, for us? The, who's, who's, who's you? Who's you? Um, I just want to read you Article 8 of the bylaws. The Prudential Committee shall establish rules and regulations that shall govern the administration, operation, and maintenance of the water system. Said rules and regulations to become effective upon a majority vote of the Prudential Committee. Now, if this supersedes that, so be it, but I'm not sure about that. Does every discussion or every decision, I mean, there's no decision of the select board that 100% of the residents of town agree with, whether it be the transfer station or the permit for TAM or whatever. There's nothing is agreed by 100% of anybody, you know? You know, that's not how it works. It's representative government. So we got here by being appointed by sitting board members, and we're charged with the responsibility to act in the best interests of all 146 ratepayers. Um, what I would propose, since I'm reacting to this new statement, is that the board vote yay or nay on what the board's opinion is of proceeding on final negotiations with the Green Lantern Group to put a 150 kilowatt solar array on the uh, wellhead site. And then we talk with lawyers about whether we're required to seek this up or down vote. Yes, sir. My name is Bill Nichols. Are we really doing this? You guys all live right in town with us. Why can't we just agree that? A majority of people that live near this thing you're proposing don't want it. They don't want it there. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter. I wouldn't go up to Alex's and cut trees all day from 6 in the morning till 5 in the afternoon every day. I know damn well it would bug him after a while. Why would I do that? No, I've known Alex my whole life. I'm not going to do that. Cutting trees, well, I don't understand. Making that. noise, doing doing anything to aggravate somebody that doesn't need to be aggravated. Well, I don't understand why we can't just say, look, where's, okay. Where's the noise? I'm not clear on I don't know. Noise. I've never lived by one. Well, how, Maybe about, you how, about, drive down, how about drive down to a, an array that's 15 times bigger and just <laughs> stand there? It's right at the racetrack, 3.2 megawatts. This is 150 kilowatts, which is like a 15th. 
the cyan, it doesn't make any noise. It doesn't make any noise. It just sits there and absorbs sunlight and we're, turns we're it into picking, electricity. We're picking, picking, picking. Mm -hmm. I got an idea. How about you take all the money that you're going to get from the solar panels and put it on the principle of the law? Every cent. How about that? Would that be fair? I don't understand that. You don't statement. understand? Well, here, here's the deal. It's $3,655 a year. That's what you're going to get now? Yes. Okay, that's out of the new deal, right? A smaller array northwest of the uh, pump house, yes. Right, so why don't we just take that 3600 We don't we, have the 3600 You're going to get it eventually. Only if the array is built. Uh, that's not what, but I, it's becoming obvious to me that regardless of the petition, regardless of what we're saying, you're going to vote amongst yourselves whether you're going to proceed <clears throat> with this gentleman tonight. But that's our job. Our job. Do your job, to... but also agree, give us a little something, take all the money you're going to get from them every year and put it on the principle of the loan. Where's the we maintenance cost? Where's the we're we're we've got all sorts of costs we're trying to govern right now. We're trying to generate revenue to maintain we understand and run that. We figured well, that where's, all out. I haven't heard you say anything about maintenance yet. Okay? So where's the... You know, I know this, firsthand about maintenance. When I had a problem with my water, I got nothing. Okay? Lucky for me, Alex was a friend enough to give me the key to shut it off so I could fix my own problem. When my daughter wanted to go onto the water system, yeah, it's gonna be about four grand, forty five hundred. We can't help you. Really? What's so what's the system do for me? I pay my belt. I don't know it nothing. So what do you have for a water problem in your house? Yeah. Well that's your house, it's not the, the meter. I didn't buy the meter. The meter plugged because the water is full of minerals or whatever. Sorry. And uh, I had nothing. And it was like, well, you're on your own. Even though you pay your bill, okay, you get no special. You fix it yourself. So you know what I did? I turned it off, cut both ends of the meter, threw it in the corner, put a piece of pipe in, and now I have water. But it was like, why is that all my problem? It wasn't my meter, you know. I couldn't even get anybody to come look at it. So that part of it doesn't even play into this whole deal at all. It's like, I understand some people get a little help here and there, though. Fire hydrant maintenance? No, no, no. Okay. And the, the uh, point is, we're is not going to go there because I don't want to be a part of the picnic. The whole thing is, the people that have to live down by this don't want it there. That's all we're saying. And, and, but I can see that you're saying, well, we're right down to the wire. This gentleman's here. This is the second or third meeting. We don't want to talk about it anymore. We're going to proceed with either telling them, well, we're going to do this or we're not. What do you, what so, do you think about living down by the Mac Motor factory? I, I would never buy a property there. Uh, none for sale there. This just isn't near anybody's house except for the Haley's who have a dirt berm and a tree line. So what about Haley's? We don't care what they think? We care what everybody thinks, but we're trying to be responsible. We're not promising to lower anybody's water rates because we haven't made any money. We don't have any money. We're just trying to come up with ways for the $3,600 a year you're going to get, one break would cost you double that if it happens to be on the state road. You one break, break of what? The, a water pipe. Uh, how about the shutoffs? Uh, have you had any trouble with shutoffs lately? Not lately. How about up by you, Alex? Was uh, oh, John's yeah, okay. there? Okay, excuse me, you're right. Yes. So, so, yeah. yeah. What that cost us? The water system. I haven't got the bill yet. Do you have any idea what it might cost? Are we talking about Brady Rose's house? Yes. I can only speculate like you can. So the number. This board is... A couple is thousand this? dollars? Probably, yeah. Okay, so there's most of what... My whole point is, what you're getting out of this ain't even going to come close to when the big problems start rolling in here. I know, that's why we're trying to get ahead of the ball while we can. You know what I mean? We're trying we're, to we're, some way, a saving Bill, have you got a better idea for us Not to yet. generate money? Not yet. Okay. 
I just don't <coughs> want it in my room. I don't want to look at it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. He's not going to see it. I, what? It's 100 yards away at a right angle. It's right there. Every I day. Live, Bill. Had you live in the live? house with Sharon Nichols? Yes, I was. Well, most of the Well, time. I just happened to drive down for 346 this morning, and I set my meter at Lincoln Street, and I was at two-tenths of a mile when I got to Steve McKay's house, and you're another tenth of a mile after that. Well, I'm before that, and I have the same. Well, it's... A mile is 5,280 feet, a tenth of a mile is 528 feet. So the McKays are three football fields away, you're two football fields away, he's five football fields away, or six. I mean, it's, it's alive, not alive right foot. in front of you. None of this is right in front of you. It's at the north end of the lot. It's next to the big plastic housing of the sewer pump system. It's next to Lincoln Street. Yes, Jimmy. I guess we're just going to keep going around and around here. Obviously, well, there's a group of people that don't like what's going on now. The next question is, will people with only 3,600, will people accept a raise in their rates? That's, other than that's that, the only that's the other way. That seems to be talked about, but we seem to be stuck on $20 or $80 for a year extra, OK? Is that the end of the world money? If you really don't like looking at solar panels, uh, are you going to raise hell? If you, what, what's that going to do if you do raise the rates? This board says tonight, we're done with the solar panels, it's out. We're going to raise the rent. Who's going to say I'm not going to pay? It? Well, Who in this room will say I won't pay? It? It's, it's, there's going to be more shut off. More headaches, more hardship. This is all down the road. But it seems like we're stuck in this dilemma of uh, the people. I respect, listen, I just love, I don't live down here, but I respect the opinion. It's the same damn thing as biomass. Everybody says, I'm going to make a lot of money with all these trucks coming in here. I drive up the hill, it's probably true, but I have no warmth or love for the biomass plant, even though I could probably make some money selling sandwiches. So here we are again. We're stuck in the same dilemma, right? You were very much against biomass. Yes, sir. You were a star. And for I'm going to tell these people in this room, you do care about harm. You're a 100% person that cares for everybody in this room and everybody in this town. You're a good old boy. No, no, I'm serious. This is it. But you're on the other side now. It seems like. Yes, I don't know why the hell you got on the other side, but you are. In this room. Well, well I'm a person. We, we've had a lot of battles in this town for a long, long time, for 50 years. We've discussed a lot of things. We've built schools, we've done things. Now we're in this room. You know, I really don't know where you go here. Could, could, could you build some housing down there? We're talking about. What, on the, on the water? On that land, on yes. Could you? No. Okay, I'm just saying, we, we I'm, I'm going out south for a street the other day in Williamstown and uh, four acres, they're building a nice complex for uh, <coughs> senior citizens on a very small piece of land. Right. Uh, there's issues about uh, water in the Green Mountain, uh, in the Alta Trail Park. Could you meet with this new owner and discuss getting 50 new customers? I, I, I told you, he threw out a bunch of options. They were good, but they were questionable. These guys are in a rock and a hard place. They're good people. I know every damn one of them. They're good people. They're not out here to hurt you. Billy, I know what you're saying. Do you want to drive by these things the rest of your life? I don't. I know you don't. And those are the people that live next to it. I, I really don't have a horse in the race. Personally, as a business, I can pay the higher rent. But as a person, I don't live down here. I wouldn't want these people to see something that they don't like every day. I, I really, if I'm sitting up at the table, I don't know what the hell I do. Well, I'm going to ask you. Can I, excuse me for a moment. Yeah. Let me just say this, okay? I got thinking about this the other day, this very point we're talking about tonight. And I was standing in front of the pump house, and I looked out, and I was shocked. I couldn't see your property. And I certainly, Steve, couldn't <coughs> see your property. Not in the summertime, but in the winter, yeah. which, which we have a long winter here, you can see straight there. 
Yes. You, yes. Can, see, you, can. you can see the pump up. Yeah, it's okay. my backyard. It's my front yard, it's my backyard, it's my side, it's there. Yeah, and then for the most part, no. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the, those trees are in now, but they're not for eight months of the year. And Bill, I don't know how you could see it unless you got out in the driveway. Or in your car. I mean, just like you see the Mac Molding factory in your car driving by. Uh, just a second. Ralph, what about screening? Yeah, I just wanted to jump in with this because... Let's talk about screening. I mean, if you looked out and you saw a row of evergreens... Right. So I, I've been sitting here trying to piece this all together. Um, how you govern the fire district is, is up to you guys. I live in Brattleboro. You're all neighbors. You, you have to figure out how to work through this, this uh, governance question. But what I can maybe help out with tonight anyway in the conversation is to talk about the issues that have to do with um, screening and the role of the select board that, that now have been clarified uh, by, by the latest legislation. Because um, RESET, H40, contains the stuff about setbacks that we've already talked about, but it also contains um, information about um, screening and basically the right of the, I think they, they call it local governing body, but basically the select board, to, um, to regulate appropriate screening. And screening is fencing and hedges and bushes and trees and, and berms, although we're not talking about berms in this case. You know, anything that makes the uh, array invisible or less visible to people driving by or people who live nearby. And so there's a section here and it says, um, there's a section, solar plant screening, um, a municipality may adopt a freestanding bylaw so this is something that the Powell Select Board could do. To establish screening requirements that shall apply to a ground-mounted plant that generates electricity from solar energy. Um, it says that the, the bylaw may designate the municipal body to make this recommendation. So they could designate the Select Board, they could designate the Planning Commission, they could designate the Development Re Review Board, however they want to do it. Um, Screening requirements and recommendations adopted under this subdivision shall be a condition of a certificate of public good issued for the plant. So in other words, it's, it's, a, um, it's a necessary condition for the Public Service Board to, to permit the array, <coughs> provided that they do not prohibit or have the effect of prohibiting the installation of such a plant and do not have the effect of interfering with its intended functional use. In other words, the local governing body, the select board or its designate, um, can't veto, they, they can't effectively veto the project by saying, you know, you're going to have to have uh, 100 feet of, of, you know, sequoia forest. Uh, uh, so, so it has to be reasonable. Um, but this, this is now, this is, this is now a um, tool that select boards can use to get in on this process. And the other thing I just want to add here, um, along with uh, screening requirements, enumeration of powers, it says screening requirements under this subdivision <coughs> shall not be more restrictive than screening requirements applied to commercial development in the municipality. Um, and then there's other references to state law. In other words, there can't be uh, discrimination against solar projects compared to bowling alleys and sawmills and anything else that uh, um, citizens want to have screened, but the screening, you know, the screening, this question of screening is now something that the uh, the town can get involved in as well, and it's a prerequisite for the permit from the PSB. So it's not something that happens down the road; it happens in the permitting process. Mm -hmm. And we don't even have an agreement. Um, if we do sign an agreement, then the ball gets rolling to try to permit the array, and yeah. that's when the town can weigh in in this yeah. fashion. Yeah, like tonight. Our vote was primarily to proceed with negotiations. Mm -hmm. It's not signing a contract for the construction or anything like that. It's to try to get all these other issues that people want addressed, addressed. And then once we see what the final product or project is going to be look, look like with the screening and the setbacks and all this other stuff, I mean, right now it's all pers you know, perspective. It's not 
We don't really have anything in black and white, but to get it in black and white, we have to proceed with negotiations. So if we vote to proceed with negotiations, it doesn't mean that we're signing the papers to have this array developed. It's just to further see what our options are and to see if we can accommodate some of your concerns in the process. So, you know, we're not trying to blow you people off and we're not trying to stuff it down your throat. You know, we want to work with you the best we can, but please give us the opportunity to do that and wait until we have a final proposal drawn up, a perspective with what the screening would be, what the setbacks are going to be, and try to get a picture of what it's going to look like. It's not going to look like what's down at the track by any stretch of the imagination. So, you know, you, you try to shoot it down before you even know what you're shooting at. And the fact that, number one, we went from whatever it was, 500 kilowatt, and then because there was concerns of the community, we backed it off to the 375 to get it on the other side of the stream, and that was to accommodate your concerns. And then now we have uh, another thing due to the setback, so we're even scaling it back more to just stay on the north side of the, of the pump house, plus the 120-foot buffer. So, I mean, it's not as though, like I said, we're certainly not trying to stuff it down your throats. And I think it's kind of premature for everybody to be waving the red flag with all sorts of object objections and things when you don't even know really what you're objecting to. We want to, you know, we're, we're searching out answers as much as you're searching out answers. But until we get to the stage where we've got it all black and white, it's all out there. You know, so, I mean... Just give us the opportunity to at least, you know, work with Green Lantern yeah. and see what we can come up with that may, you know, address some of your concerns and stuff like that. I mean, that's basically what we're saying that we want to vote on tonight. We're not voting to break ground tomorrow and start sticking the thing in there, you know. So, you know, I just want you people to know that, you know, we are concerned with your considerations right. and concerns and stuff like that. But through this negotiation process, we can address some of the things, such as the screening and things along those lines. So when you enter into a negotiation, that is giving, that is starting the process, right? So you're starting the process. All we petitioned to ask you not to do, and by the way, there's more people on that petition than there is board members. And by the way, if you mentioned lawyers, right? Because the comment was, well, we're going to vote tonight and then we're going to get our lawyers involved. That's implying right, that you guys are trying to stuff it down our throats. Mm -hmm. And that's also implying that you would have done mm -hmm. the other solar array if, if the legislative didn't go through, you would have looked at my package, you would have taken our concerns, and you would have done the same thing that you're doing to them now with the smaller array. And the only reason that you're going smaller is because you have to. It's not you compromising with us. We're trying first, to the first one was compromise. No. The first one was our compromise. From okay. 500 to 375. Okay. I don't know why, I don't know how that was uh, articulated to you or, or why the compromise took place, but... Because of concerns from the citizens in the surrounding area. That's why. Okay, so, so we... that's we why we scaled that. it back. Yeah. And then now we have another set of situations that we have to mm -hmm. deal with. So it's scaled them back even more. Legally but, restrained. Right. right. And as uh, Ralph was saying, you know... We want to definitely, we're, he's concerned, we're concerned, you're concerned with the screening of the whole thing. So, I mean, you know, until we have to proceed with negotiations to, un, to get a full picture of what the thing's going to be. At that particular time, then everybody would be in a position to vote yay or nay and would know what the heck we're talking about. You know, because right now it's all... Let's, uh, Earlier let's on, I spoke about the authority. If you people vote tonight to do this, you're going directly to the DBA. And they're going to screen you. There's 19 to 20 something conditions for these folks to have a concert here. The DBA is going to put you through the magnifying glass. All the rules and regulations that they have the authority to do by the power of the selectmen. The DBA is the the DRB. DRB. Yeah, excuse me, the DRB. I'm sorry, that, but you know. You're going to go through. Public, are we talking the Public Service Board, the Vermont no, State, no. or the Smithers, Pomo the Development Pomo. Review Board? Be, be, the Review Board here, yes. yes. Smithers and the, the, that gang there that sure. really had a really, really good meeting with the concert people that thought that they, could, they owned the property here and they could do whatever they wanted to. Thank you, but no thank you. You can only do this. 
there's a certain amount of decibels, there's a certain amount of time frames, there's a certain amount of uh, who's going to bring in the, the this and that. I mean, it, it's, it's paperwork that thick. You, and all of these people <coughs> will be here at the, D, the, the uh, DRB. DRB. The DRB is in Parnell is Frank Lamb's the chairman, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know how many people in the room when they did the racetrack thing, but I'll tell you what it was the extent of there was three lawyers there, uh, you know, outside lawyers, and uh, this will this will be this is a hot button issue in Vermont right now. Who controls what in the small towns? Uh, right. Every day you pick up the papers. We, we, we're not going to let the public service board tell us what we can do anymore, so to speak. You know, I mean, this is not something that's going to be sort on the table. Uh, you guys can't get away with anything when you go before the. Most of us don't even want to. I know you don't. But, but what you're saying is the pro all you're moving is the process forward. Whatever, good, bad, or different. You can kill it right now if you want to, or you can move on. And the reason that we're but even engaging in this discussion is for $3,655 a year. I'm looking at our treasurer's report from last month, ending balance $441.62. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll build up to our 13238 payment on October 1st, but that's the way it's going. We're breaking even, so the board is looking for increases of income. If we can refinance the bond at a lower interest rate, that's one. That would be a good one. If we can get three thousand six hundred and fifty five dollars a year, a year from a very small 150 kilowatt solar array which is nothing like a 29 and a half megawatt biomass plant that has a hundred log trucks a day and draws seven hundred thousand gallons a day out of the aquifer for 210 consecutive days that was there this is nothing like that this is inert panels that are black so that they can absorb sunlight, turn it into electricity. The estimate of return on investment from the entity that are going to invest in this is 6% a year, which is better than a savings account, but similar to a mutual fund. Yes, sir. But to answer Walter's idea there very simply, you're on one side, the rest of us are on the other. But if you want to stop a freight train, you don't throw the brakes on when you're 100 feet from the intersection. You stop the freight train way back, okay? We're trying to slow the freight train. But we do not agree with your ideas, okay? And you have not explained, you haven't convinced anybody that I can see. Right. Well, Jim, the whole thing is we have, we're not even to a point where we know what it's going to look like. We're not even to That's that point. I said, you keep, you want to keep delay. Go down the track. Go down the track. We'll throw the brakes on later. Why say yes or no, no to something you don't even know anything about? I'm not saying you. It's like us, too. It's like we, we're concerned what it's going to look like. We're concerned with a lot of different stuff. You know, this is the whole thing. It's like right now everybody's guessing what it's going to look like. Everybody's guessing, guessing, guessing. If we can continue negotiations and get it down in black and white, then, we, then we're going to have something solid that's there that we can talk about, negotiate, look at, and then discuss it. But until then, right now, it's just, you know. Uh -huh. I thought you already had a proposal for the new, for the new solar array. <laughs> no, Rebecca no. Hi, Rebecca Dragon. Excuse me just a second. Oh, yes, Can you identify sir. yourself, please? Yes, my name is Stephen Morgan. I live at 43 Weather Ridge Lane, which is right next to Stephen McKay and right in between. Stephen Morgan. Uh, yeah. 43 White Birch Lane asked. So my question is, you don't have a, a, a proposal for this new array? No, they just they passed the new setbacks. Well, there's just a drawing. You know, there's this has been distributed. There's, there's just a uh, sketch. Okay, I haven't seen that. Do you have a copy of that? Sure. Um, probably the best thing for me to do is to email him to Ray. And then well, there's a copy. There's a copy. Right there. Come on. Okay. I'd like a copy, too. I haven't seen that. Okay. This is the same as the one that you got about. So you just took out all the panels south of the... Yes. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah. Can, would you ask Linda to make uh, sure. 20 copies of that, please? Oh, yeah. There's yeah, a new really copy nice. machine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Rebecca Dragon. No, but it, it shows the um, Rebecca yeah. Dragon. Yeah, yes, like my everything. Um, so we, my concern, um, and I and it really becomes stronger tonight when I see because everybody who lives near it doesn't want to live near it. So I'm not a ratepayer. I don't live in the district. I just purchased um, that big, huge. I don't know which way I'm facing. Um, that big, huge white home on 346 with the crazy tree on its side, um, and. I, I feel concerned about property values at this point. Um, you know, if people don't want to live near this now, are people going to want to buy a house near this? If they can't, yeah, not that everyone's planning to move, I'm not planning to move really, but at one point we'd love to build a little cabin up further into our woods, maybe we'd sell that front house. If they can't sell their houses, what happens to my property value just down the street? And so this is this is where I start feeling a little bit concerned just about that particular site, its proximity to houses, the fact that residential people, pe you know, commuters were going by that all the time. The gateway to Vermont. This this is what you see when you're driving into Vermont. That's kind of what my concern is. These property values, and I was wondering, I'm asking if the board is going to research and look into other places where they have placed these solar panels in close proximity to homes and what happens to their property values, because I can guarantee you one thing, if our property values go down, the town's not going to assess our taxes any differently. So, you know, and so that, that's just a, like a genuine concern I have is, as someone who just purchased a home here, and it, that is down the street from the proposed array. Well, let's talk about the gateway to Vermont, which is Route 7. <clears throat> It's also, yeah, according to the town plan, it is also Route 346. Right, I but I want to talk about Route 7. Okay. You're driving up Route 7, you look to your left, there's an old hulk of a um, racetrack building, and there's a 3.2 or 2.4 megawatts of solar panels. In an industrial area surrounded by stores, car dealership, the stewards, I mean, it is an, it's an appropriately sited in my mind, appropriately decided it's not surrounded by idyllic, beautiful little farmhouses. There's a lot of people on the Northwest Hill Road that overlook. But uh, what I'm saying is there's already, and there. Yeah. It's right next to Mac Mullen, too. I mean, you know, so as you're saying, you're like 346 is. There's nothing on it. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff on 346 that's, that's not really eye appealing. And I'm not trying to. Justified, right? I'm just saying, you know, if you got to make an argument, you got to make it at least but realistic. But molding is not near houses, and it, it's not. There's this no house in the front yard. It's, front it's, it's of adjacent to the property. It's adjacent to the adjacent property line. It's adjacent to the line. Is it to my? Well, I wonder if and you might have a hard time selling your home if you want to because we'll look at the Mac molding. Why add another? If there's an ugly thing on Route 346. Why add another thing that's right near houses that would depreciate, you well, know, the property values? It's an ugly thing on Route 346 that you can't see. I mean, it's not You're even an ugly it. thing. It represents you alternatives the, to... The whole point, though, you can't cover it. You, you can do all, talk about all that screening, but the whole point is to get sunlight. So right. really, right. what but do you But you're not in a helicopter. Yeah, what are you talking about? You're on the ground. You'd be a tree stand looking at it or something? I mean, so, so if you have a tree there, it's not going to block the sun coming down to the... No, the sun's house. up there. The trees the are, the are the only ground. seven feet high. There, I mean, I'm five foot nine, so... Mm -hmm. If I were stint, that eye, it's not looming over anything. It's laid out to capture. So, time. you guys said you're going to vote tonight. Have you all, it sounds like it's already decided that you're. To proceed with negotiations. We've been not to break it's it up. never like, it, have, you, have you asked any of the ratepayers? I mean, have you put it out to vote to say, <laughs> would, would they be willing to take? I think we, it was what, $5 more a quarter? I mean, Five. as I'd there's five. Huh? Five. Twenty five. What would it be to make that money? Twenty. Twenty. Twenty dollars more a quarter. So that's twenty dollars more every three months. Eighty dollars a year. Right. You got it. That's eighty dollars a year. Yeah, that's. I'm not in Well, how many people that. want to pay eighty dollars more a year in the water? I certainly don't. Oh well, then that's one vote nay. <laughs> Sir, with all due respect to your profession, since when does a Vermont ask the double where you buy a pitchfork? Who's the double? Uh, well, my whole point is here, 
What information do we have from uh, other towns that have done this, from people who live by it? Um, why are we getting all our information, with all due respect, sir, from this man? Well, we are. Is he not representing the very outfit that's going to make the 6% on this? And if he weren't here, you'd say, where are these people that are, you know, I mean, oh, I got you got to have somebody more. here to represent. I got a feeling this new thing from Montpelier was a knee-jerk reaction to, hey, boys, there's a party going on and we don't have our fingers in it. And it was sold. So if you do a little reading on this, Vermont is like, that's the place to be right now. Get in there, get these places situated. Start getting the money rolling in because there's no rules, no regulations, no problems. So the legislature said, wait a minute, okay, we're going to hit the brakes here. Give us a few months to figure this all out. And then you're going to see more of that come out and say, no, nah, the Green Mountain State don't really want to be the place where there's all these black solar panels all over. Hell's creation because we were too stupid to figure out what was going on. What about, it, it's what just about Massachusetts, though, Bill? What about Massachusetts? Everybody I know in Massachusetts is dying to live in Vermont. I'm just saying <laughs> about the solar stuff. What is it doing for anybody over there? Do you know anybody with a lower electric bill? No. All I'm telling, saying is that it's a, a big thing in other states besides for Vermont. For 3600 bucks, we don't have to be a part of all this. Ridiculous. It's not it's, we're just selling ourselves out. We're just going to be a part of their solution instead of part of a problem for them. We'll figure out a different way. We're not stupid. We'll figure it out. Thank you very much, but we'll figure it out. And then we ain't got to worry 25 years from now when them things are broke and they're out of business and wonder how we're going to clean this muscle. No, it's in the, it's if we in don't the, do it to begin with, we don't have to worry about it. That'd be true, Bill, except if you read the prior contracts, there's, there's an actual cleanup after 20 years if the place gets mopped up. By who? By whoever owns it. Explain this for me, Ralph, will you? It's yeah. not people anymore. It's a business. That's Here's right. this business. They're going to clean this mess up. Well, guess what? No, the business filed Chapter 11. They're long gone. What about the people in it? No, they weren't bonded, so we can't go get them. No, let them explain it better than me, please. I, yeah. I wish I could I mean, take it you seriously, but I can't. I'm sorry. I, I just can't. I'm not going. And $20 yeah. a month, or $20 a quarter raise is not 36 it's 11400 So it would probably be closer to 5 Yeah, it's 5 If you look at the... I'm telling you, eighty dollars a year, right? Times one hundred forty-three ratepayers is eleven thousand four hundred and forty dollars. So you, if you raise it twenty bucks, you can make four times as much. You're going to make off of that. Raise, raise it half. Raise it right? five. Raise it half. Raise it ten bucks. You'll make double. We need a lot more money than what we're trying to get. Double, right? Double the amount. Double, triple. We need a lot more money to maintain the system. To to keep the system functioning, okay? Everybody just thinks that it's tops when you turn your faucet on and the water comes out. That's the easy part. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's getting older. There's going to be <coughs> maintenance stuff. This big box to dig it up, repair pipes, all that other type of stuff. So even eleven thousand dollars is peanuts in the whole scheme of things. I'd like to. Uh, it's a six of the rest of thirty-six hundred. Look even worse though. But no, I haven't put them together. You know, I'd like to draw like this discussion there and close. A lot of people are not in a position to absorb that increase either. You know, so that's not I would like Ralph to explain about the contract. It's a proposed contract, and it was negotiated <clears throat> between our lawyer, Rob Wilmington, who read it line by line and made many amendments which the Green Lantern Group agreed to and Rob explained it to the board in a meeting but uh, part of the contract is that if the owner of the array which would be the Green Lantern Group in this case fails to 
abide by the terms of the contract, then they're required to remove the array and restore the area. Uh, please say in more detail or just what's your comment on what I just said? Yeah, well, I mean, what it boils down to, I mean, one key thing that Ray just said is that uh, in what's now being proposed, I mean, for, forget the proposals in the past, in what is now being proposed, the owner of the, the array, the owner and operator of the array will be us, Green Mountain, I mean Green Lantern Group. It will not be our investors or some other party. And, you know, we can't predict the future. So as a result, in the contract, there are provisions for what happens if we go bankrupt, for example. Um, the bank, the lender, has a major uh, ability to, to cure a default and to step in and keep operating the thing and find a new buyer to take over. But the thing is, you know, during the 20, and it could, could be extended 25 or, or more years, during the useful life of the array, um, it's never going to be abandoned as some kind of, you know, derelict white elephant because the legislature guarantees the ability to continue enjoying the, uh, the, the premium pricing, the adder, for 10 years, and then it can continue selling power to Green Mountain Power for the remainder of its lifetime. It's a performing asset. It's, it's a business that is making money. Uh, nobody would walk away from it. Um, we don't want to disappear. We don't want to go bankrupt. But um, there are provisions in the contract for, for, you know, situations where somebody else has to take it over. But it'll continue to be operated. And whoever owns it at the end of its life will take it apart and completely dismantle it and pull the stakes out, and there won't be anything left. I mean, it's a very simple array to, um, to remove. It's not like... It's not like tearing down buildings or grading a site uh, or removing uh, concrete pads or anything like that. It's really just a case of pulling stakes out of the ground and disconnecting the wires and taking off the panels. So there's not going to be any concrete pads or...? I think there's going to be a very... There's probably not going to be any concrete pads at all because the transformer can be put on a pole. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think there'll be any concrete at all. Anybody who wants... Could you could... Somebody take these and pass them out. These are just a rough drawing. The um, Green Lantern Group doesn't want to invest in uh, um, a lot of expensive engineering drawings until they have a commitment to proceed at that level. I think with this petition and accepting uh, Steve's and Melissa's and Jim's statement that 5% of the um, voters, if they petition, they can ask for a vote. I think we should have a vote and I think we're going to have to have another meeting where the advantages and disadvantages are proposed. We're going to have to send out a mailing to all the um, all of the ratepayers, and we're going to have to do this again. And then we'll live or die by the vote. I think we have to do that because you keep saying everybody, everybody, but it's really I'm seeing ten people here, one of whom has come to ask about his, you know. I don't think it is everybody, but I don't know. I don't know. So let's. And what about a proposal for five dollars more a quarter? In place of this, to cover this. Uh, you can make any proposal you like. Well, is that an option? I mean, that you guys would consider five dollars more to, to propose to the Greenbergers <coughs> instead of the array. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I just have to say again that the five board members are responsible for acting in the best interests of the water system. Now, not wanting to get into detail with Billy, who has left, but I will say that we only maintain the main water lines, the corporation on the line, everything from the curb stop, which is the shutoff, to your house. That's all yours. We're not even like legally allowed to go on your property. We can go and turn off the water, but we can't go in your house. That's trespassing. But if you put a faulty 
meter in there, if you put the faulty meter in there, I'm sorry, I think Billy, you know, had a point that you put the meter well, in Well, if I sell you, you a car and 12 years later it has a problem, I, it, nobody put a faulty meter in. Meters were offered in 1998. This is now 17 years later. Yeah. But he invited nobody. you in. It wasn't trespassing. He asked you to come in to fix it, and he said nobody would. So. Well, that's what he said. That's well, he asked, what he said. Let me just say this, okay? Mm -hmm. He came to my house. Hell, I, I don't know what to do. This is a Sunday, or a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. I'm doing stuff at my house. Okay, I don't get a day off. I'm 365 days a year. Uh -huh. 20 below zero, water main. Guess who gets to go out? Me. 20 bucks a day. Thank you very much. Okay? So Billy comes to my house. He's like, I got no water. So I went down there with a the key. We shut it off. And, you know, he says, I don't know what to do. I said, Bill, I, I don't know what to do to help you. I, I do what you do. Probably find out why inside the house I can't go in there. He didn't ask me to do anything for him other than shut the water off. So I don't know where this is coming from. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did what I was asked of you on a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. Pronto, right now. You're and I would have done it for Jim, and I would have done it for Jim, and I would have done it for Mark. You're a low budget outfit. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Mm -hmm. well, no, no budget. No budget. <laughs> yeah, no no. budget. <laughs> That's what no budget. This is a thankless job. Yeah. Yes. Hello, Mr. Cameraman. Mm -hmm. This is a thankless job. All I hear is complaints. And all I hear is negativity. I don't hear any constructive, anything constructive at all to help this district. And guess what? The only reason people are here tonight because they think it affects them directly. I'm very sorry. Alex, I love but you, you know you what? You Nobody the comes to these the meetings in the five years I've been on this board. Nobody. Very until good. this has been sure. proposed. But wouldn't you say if you're hearing 100% negativity, you're not. doing something wrong, Alan. You're not here 100 percent. That's why we're going to have You're to go ahead to start. If you hear one I think 5 percent is the number we're talking <clears> about here. <throat> I don't think any of the proposals that like Steve made or anything like that to help you guys out were, was negativity. You know, I, I don't see that. You know, you guys are trying to fix a problem. Okay, one we're, guy. No, not one guy. You know, we all got together, you know. Trying to, trying to figure things out, you know, trying to put things together and, and come up with something different for you guys, you know, that's all. It's not all negativity. It doesn't have to be all negativity. No, you know? it doesn't have to be. No, it's not that we don't appreciate what you guys do, but we're trying to offer other solutions so that we don't have to live with this thing for 20 years. That's all. <clears throat> Is the board designed to... to uh to monitor and govern the water system, or to monitor and govern the water system and its and its ratepayers. Is you do, is your job to, to is, strictly to, look the, the at the is system to deliver clean, safe water to ratepayers? To ratepayers, and do you feel that your job is to monitor the system itself, or to monitor the water system and maintain the water system for the ratepayers? I don't see the difference. Yeah, it's a yeah, we, we, we don't want a water system where water just sits in the ground. It's what good's a water there. system without ratepayers? Exactly. Right. So if the ratepayers are asking for for something and you're hearing negativity and the people that live around it and you're hearing these problems, there's got to be a better way. And you know what I feel? I feel that you have given us nothing but negativity because all I do is try to provide. All we do is try to provide you options, and all we hear back is well. This isn't going to work. This isn't good enough. This isn't going to work. We're going to do this. It doesn't really matter. And all we're trying to say is, can we compromise? Can we do something that, that the people around the, 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 the plant will, will be able to live with and that you guys will be able to make money off of? That's all anybody's looking for. It's not negativity. Uh, it's not just I agree, you guys. I agree with the fact that all we do. Last month when you proposed, you gave us those ideas, expressed thanks. Gratitude and everything. So don't be coming at us now that we're all shooting off just negative either. Just try to go make it very apparent to you and anybody else that wants to give good ideas, we're receptive to them, we're grateful for it, and we appreciate it. And I've said that to you personally the last time. I, so I, I, I so that. and that's, that's right, right, one so idea out of the twelve that I that I presented. Well no, I said all of them. I said all of them. I said thank you very much for all those ideas. And 
Now you're saying that all we do is give you negativity. I want to Which one of the ideas have you implemented? I'm That's gonna, the negativity I'm gonna, that I'm talking about. I'm going to read through the ideas, okay? May I? And respond Absolutely. to each one. We're going to start with refinance the bond. Good idea. Here's one. We're going to do that. All right? Maybe we can get uh, lessen our payments of $3,000 a year, which would be a net increase. A $5 a quarter increase on 140 people would be $700 a quarter, which would be $2,800 a year. That's an option. Now, I guess if you'd... 146. Uh, one third reduction in board stipend would increase revenue $600 a year. The board currently gets a $30 um, stipend for attending a board meeting and doing service work. Uh, that's certainly a consideration, but I think it's inappropriate to get into that right now. Reducing the, quote, free water for five board members to only half the year would generate $600 a quarter and $1,200 a year. I don't see it as free water. I see it as service, as a incentive for service. So I'm not, I would not vote for that. Could we Paying do three free quarters? and just pay one and decrease that in half? Can we do, if a $10 increase or a $10 decrease isn't what you want, can we do five? Is there some way to meet in between so that everybody can contribute to the, or can help the problem that the water board is facing? Um, maybe. Wouldn't I flushing don't... a hydrant be as, well, as much water, flushing these hydrants be as, well, as much water as you guys use? Come on, swimming pool uh, for years. I planning. just, I personally know how much the board does, so I, that doesn't interest me reducing. It's not free water, it's an incentive to serve. And uh, so, but now, paying treasurer, secretary, an hourly wage, I would like to speak up for the modest wage that our treasurer, secretary gets. She handles at least $16,000 a quarter. She sends out all the bills. She gets all the bills back, takes the checks as they come in, trickle in, deposit them. She drives from Bennington to Pownall to pick up the mail at post office box 350. She puts all the bills in envelopes. I'm This is a very responsible, she's handling sixty dollars to $80,000 a year. I think I'm grateful personally for her service, and I don't see nickel and diming her until she <coughs> says I can find a better way. I mean, she's responsible for a lot of money. I'm with you, Rick. So, yeah, um, okay. In 2014, the stipend of Anne Treasurer Secretary was over one sixth of the operating expenses. Well, there are operating expenses, and. Postage in 2014 was $311. Purchasing a domain for web bill pay is $50, which could decrease postage by at least 50%. This could lead to $150 savings a year. I actually took some time and researched this. Uh, my wife and I have a business making and selling handmade pottery and teaching pottery classes. If any of you are interested, come take a class. Uh, as part of our business, we have what's called an Etsy store. It's an online store with photographs of our pottery and people go on and they pay with a credit card, which is great because we get an order, it's already paid for, I shipped one out to California today. So. On this thing I shipped out, it was a $28.50 payment, and Etsy, or I'm sorry, PayPal takes on $1.13, which is 4%. So if we took online payments, we would have to do it through PayPal or some other service. 
4% of $115 is a $4.60 commission fee, yielding $110.40 to the water system. Contrast this with our current paper bills, paper and envelope and ink for the printer, I generously estimate at 12 cents per bill mailed, plus 48 cents postage stamp, total 60 cents per $115 bill, yielding $114.40 per quarterly water bill paid, a positive $4 extra per bill for our current paper billing system over a proposed online payment system. Add to this that a portion of our customers do not have computers. Some of them don't have telephones. They still deserve water as much as anybody else. So we got to mail them a bill. So if we got to mail some people a bill, let's just spend 60 cents per bill, mail them all a bill and be done with it and not get into, I mean, I could see having a website to post minutes and that stuff, but maybe we just do that on the on board forum, I don't know. But we have to look at actual figures and not just accept the assumption that doing transactions online would be cheaper and more efficient. Plus, you have to have a credit card to pay online. I mean, it just, we got to mail with the bills. Some of our customers <coughs> don't really have checking accounts. So they go to the post office and they buy a money order, put it in an envelope and it goes to the post office. It's just the way it is. We have to deal with what we have, not what some of us, I mean, I got a computer and I take online payments and pay 4%. Okay. I don't think online payments would be, uh, it would be a net loss. So that's a negative. The operator is 40% of the operating expenses. I just have to tell you that water system operators are few and far between. Alex works as assistant to our operator, um, Burr Snow, and Alex, you heard it. I mean, he wasn't just sitting at home. I'll tell a little story on Alex whenever Dorothy Kimball called, and when Billy Nichols called, he was at the Willows Nursing Home in Williamstown as a part of his church service, visiting people in the nursing home. So he gets a call on his cell phone and asks, you know, he doesn't have free time when there's a... I'm sorry if I told a story on you that... No, that's okay. <laughs> he was doing a good there's thing on his free me. time. I'm just telling you, we're lucky to have the operator at the cost we have, so I didn't if it's 40% of the operating expenses, I, I didn't know. It's, it's, I'm sure. I know, it's, you have no idea the stuff he deals with. It's always something because it's a big system of underground pipes and hookups and all that. That's why I didn't put a dollar value on it because okay. I, I didn't know. And we appreciate So, it. I can see if this solar thing doesn't go by, then we will have to raise the rates because we're just, you know, we can't add a new sandwich or a new line of candy bars. You know? There's no new customers. We get a few new customers. I mean, rare. We have the potential of a new customer here, and uh, Reverend, you've been very patient, and I hope you've learned something. Oh, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I think we have to vote. I think we have to have another informational meeting, and I think we have to let the ratepayers have their say. Is there anybody else? Now, if the ratepayers vote 9 to 8 or 29 to 28, it's a go. Do you understand that? I mean, I don't know if you how we're all going to lobby and all. 9 to 8. What do you mean? The ratepayers show up here at the meeting and vote? They're going to have to. That's what's going to, that's the way it's going to be. They're not going to send mailers out to have no. the people? No, that's right for right. frost. Just, as long as we all know that yeah. up front. It's going to be a vote. My name is Jim Winchester. Mm -hmm. okay. Here's my three votes. Next or second. no, Jim comes, Jim's tenant Joe comes, and Jim's tenant Ricky comes. If they I, come, they vote if they're on the list, and okay. Cindy has a list. Okay, I understand that. And I also think that you ought to explain that if this doesn't go through, there probably, most likely, will be an increase in rates. Yeah. And what you're saying now could possibly be $20 a 
every quarter. No, we're talking more like seven dollars. Yeah. If yeah. we're gonna. I'm sorry, I said twenty dollars because I was my head was still geared around a three seventy five. Okay, even grand. seven dollars. But you expect because people got to realize that O and M costs money, and this system is getting older. And that's where a lot of the money is going to be going from from now to the future. Because you're going to have breakdowns. It's like I've been telling you for the last five years, we should have bought a pump five years ago. That pump isn't going to last a whole lot longer. I think we took the test on that. And it is getting yes, weaker. It's weaker yeah. and, and, and that's the way things go with a system like this. We, we really had a lot of discussions. We do have a financial issue, but we have a good water system, and so we, uh, so it's good, clean, plentiful, non-metered water, and any of you can cut your meter out and put it in a corner like Billy did, because we aren't gonna go to metering, because it costs more to run around and read them, and then compute it than it does to just. When we had that, when we had that problem up where the pipe caved in up underneath the road. Yeah. What was the total cost? Remember the total cost on that? It was a lot. I wasn't on the board then. I we had to borrow money to make that happen. Well, yeah, we got some state grants too. Remember, Bosso helped us right. out. That's what I mean. Oh, yeah. And Bosso going to do nothing. You never, you never know, know what can happen. Well, that's why we're trying to come up with a a way to generate money. We have $8,000 savings account. We want to add to that. We want to build it up. That's the point. Okay. So I'm going to now... Can I ask to make a motion to raise $5? No, that would be a board member makes a motion. You, you well, can, one, can I ask one of you to make a motion? I'll ask, does anyone on the board would like to make a motion to raise the quarterly rate by $5? Not at this point. No. I think if, if we're going to start monkeying around with that, you got to look down the road even further because costs do nothing but go up. That's right. Right. So, I mean, so we're going to so we're going to raise everybody's rate every year for five bucks. You know what I'm saying? It's like no, just just start it and then see what happens. I mean, you haven't raised it. Yes, we have. And we did two and a half years ago. Okay. By fifteen dollars. Okay. I mean, inflation, Which was the first that's time in 11 happening. years. It happens with everything. Right, that's why we're looking into other ways of raising money without. I'm going to call for a vote by the board of a yes or no majority vote as to whether to proceed to final negotiations for a proposed 150 kilowatt community solar array proposed to be built northwest of the pump house. There's nothing to argue about unless we have this vote. So. Let's have this vote and let's have a yay or nay on what the board is. Well, let's have the vote. Board members? Oh, uh, yes, to proceed. Let, I'd like to hear a motion to proceed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion to proceed with the negotiations with Green Lantern at this point in time. All right. Walt Moreau has made a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Yeah. Alex has seconded. All in favor, signify by raising your hand. The motion passes five to zero. We now have something to have a meeting and a vote about. Um, I now want to move on to number nine, discussion by the board about water supply to new parsonage behind Faith Community Church. There's a three more uh, items on the agenda. So here's the issue with the parsonage behind the church. The main water line is on the library side. The parsonage is on the other side. We had a vote, an affirmative vote, three months ago or four months ago when a water supply to a building that Jimmy Winchester owns behind the store, their spring dried up. And the vote was that we would not require, I mean, I want to read the relevant ordinance. Oh, for crying out loud. 
just have them right in front of me. Bylaws and ordinances. This is called, this is number two of our ordinances, which were passed by a vote of the board on the 22nd of February 2012 and adopted on March 2012. Mandatory connection to municipal water system. All units receiving construction approval, building <coughs> permit, site plan approval, or final plot approval subsequent to the adoption of this ordinance situated within the Pono Fire District Number 2 and abutting on any street alley or right-of-way on which there is located an adequate municipal water line as determined by the Prudential Committee is hereby required at his her own expense to connect directly to the municipal water system in accordance with the provisions of this ordinance. What this says is, but then the next sentence is, said connection is mandated unless undue hardship would result, in which case the property owner should request in writing a deferral of this requirement. We had Jimmy Winchester in front of us who asked us in person, may I make a separate curb stop connection to the existing water line that goes mm -hmm. under Route 7? And we said, for crying out loud, we're not going to require Route 7 to be dug up. It's like 75 feet wide. Yes. So when the system was put in, Jimmy already had one line under Route 7, which was paid for by the initial bond and the other grants. And there are two. There's a house just north, and there's the store. So a third curb stop was taken. I would like to say if we do it for Jimmy, we do it for Reverend Fry, because he'd also have to dig up the road. It's not as big a road, but it's still a road. And furthermore, how much water does the church use? The Methodist Church and the Faith Community Church don't pay water bills. That's part of the original agreement of the water system. But so you've got a service and a few people go to the bathroom. You have a community supper and you wash some dishes. But it seems to me if... So I propose to the board that we just install a curb stop on the existing line, that the parsonage does pay a quarterly water bill as a private residence, and So be it. Yeah. Excuse me, what's your name, sir? Uh, Jerry Fry. Jerry? That part you All right, so, is that what you're asking us to do, Jerry? Because Jim asked us, I just want to make sure he's asking us to do it before we say mm -hmm. we're going to do it. Right. Yes. Okay. Does, does that make sense? Well, and uh, <clears throat> I always said that the plumber, um, he'd take care of mm -hmm. making that connection. There's like a Y then, I guess. Um, I'm working with Dave Hayden. And uh, it'll probably wind up being a T, a you know, T. whatever, whatever's required. Yeah, I mean. the bigger, and he could get with you guys and you could let him know what we need to do. And we would get a curt another, we would purchase another stop, or you have it, or how does that work? I just I need to think know. in this case, we're going to need we have an additional curb stop, right? right. We're going to need two more one for the parsonage and one for you. So we can shut, you know what I mean? So there'll be a separate shutoff for each, and then one central, you know, main shutoff, which you have now. And you know what I mean? Just yeah. from the shutoff, instead of going, you know, it goes to the parsonage now, and put a T or a Y, whatever, okay. and then another another curb stop for the dwelling. Can I have them contact you just to know what to do? Cause yeah, I know Dave, Dave, you can call me. And Brad, I just want to get a price out of them so we can Okay. Right. But that's what you're asking us to do, Ray. All right, so I'll second the motion that you made, Ray. With you. All right. Um, so let me just restate the motion because I agree with what Alex said. There need to be two shutoffs. There needs to be a church shutoff. Right now, is there a yes. church shutoff? There, is, there yeah. is one, you know, pretend the church was just a regular house. It's the same thing. You know right. what I mean? But is it near the road? Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So would we, I mean, you could leave that one. Yeah, we should. 
and then from in front of the shutoff go to the parsonage. It would mean a little bit longer ditch. Do you see what I mean? You, you already got that installed, don't you? If you are, we have the the line to the curb stop. In the yeah, we have and we have legs recoiled underneath there, so we figured out what we had to do. Yeah, so we'll just have to we'll put a T there. And if run you put the T in front of the shutoff, yeah. then well, I have the out of brass because I'm. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not going out too far. Yeah, I'll give you my phone number after okay. there, and you can call, have a call there. I make a motion that we not require the parsonage for the Faith Community Church to rip up the road and make a separate attachment to the main water line. Well seconded. All in favor? All right. Okay. I just got one question. Sure. The church doesn't get charged. Right. But the parsons will be. Yes. You you mentioned something about he will now become a quarterly. You meant he'll be a rate like payer. A, he's a rate payer. Okay. Yes. And uh, you understand that. Yeah. Which church is it? It's the uh, I know it's that one, but is it it's Faith Christian Fellowship. Faith okay. Christian Fellowship. Okay. All right. Number 10, discussion by the board about the fire department taking a water for swimming pool filling. Would you tell about that? Uh, well, I guess you're trying to get me to direct my conversation towards Ray's when I confronted her in the the other day. Yes. Okay. What I'm talking about here is I happen to be at a friend's house or the weekend, like I said, an operator doesn't get a day off. And when it comes to somebody taking water, I'm like a beagle on a rabbit. So I happened to be at this function, and I heard beep, 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 and I heard a step, you know, and I heard the maxi brakes come on, and I hear the truck idling, and I'm thinking, what would the truck be doing on Memorial Day? No dump trucks around here on a Memorial Day. So I went up on the whole highway and saw the fire department the uh, latest and greatest truck that sold three gallons, 3,000 gallons backed up to the hydrant in front of the firehouse. So I went up and politely asked what the, what the purpose was, and I was told, oh, well, my buddy's pool is low. We haven't had any rain. I said, okay, you told us before that you couldn't fill pools anymore, and you weren't going to do this anymore because of insurance. And you also said you couldn't flush our hydrants because of insurance, but yet you're flushing this hydrant now and it'll fill somebody's pool. That's okay? That's been an ongoing problem for years. I want to make a statement on that. Mm -hmm. I did contact somebody from the fire department mm -hmm. and I asked about getting some water from my pool. Could I? Could and I, I was you, told. Can you tell me your name, please? Just Mark, for Mark Smith. Thank you, Mark. And I was told that they couldn't do it because of insurance purposes. Mm -hmm. Not a buddy, though. Huh? You're just not enough of a buddy. Not a point. I'm just saying I oh, yeah, called yeah, yeah, and that's right. what they told me. Right, right, right. right. No, I'm not, I'm not on the buddy list. <laughs> so, you know, what do we do now? Well, I get a phone call. Okay, I get a phone call left at the pump house. You know, this is the Powell Fire Department. We took 1,500 gallons just to let you know. Thank you. You know, okay, that's great. They let us know. I even told the driver of the truck. You know, hey guy, when you take 3,000 gallons, I, I, I'm starting to wonder where the 3,000 gallons is. I know how much roughly the system uses every day. 3,000 <coughs> gallons is a significant amount, and I'm going to wonder, do I have a leak? You know? Yeah. Now, this has been an ongoing problem for what, how many years? Oh, well, so, seven or eight years. Anyway. So anyway, you know, what, what do we do? Guys, we're here. You're here. Does that go to somebody that's already payer? No. Okay. Then they should no, be charged. To, That's right. Charge. Well, yeah. we actually, didn't we actually present the fire department with? We went through all this. We established a commercial water sales policy. We bought a meter for a thousand dollars, which we made a thousand dollars in sales, but not much more. We've got dead ends on swimming pool filling people. And the fire department said they weren't going to do it anymore because of liability on their truck. Insurance doesn't cost. Mm -hmm. Which is what I was told. Mm -hmm. So, I guess the only thing this board can do is send them a bill for our insurance. Our commercial water sales policy is a penny a gallon. If they took three thousand gallons, 
Well, they claim fifteen hundred yeah. on the phone call, but we got a three thousand gallon capacity. That's thirty dollars. Whether the truck was full or not, you know how much was in the truck before you filled it up. You know, and that's another debate. <clears throat> certainly, I you know the fire department is not on our system. They have their own well, but this is a fire district. One of the reasons for the establishment was to put the hydrants around and protect the property of the people. So. The only thing I can think of to do is to send to them a bill. Absolutely. And a bill for the volume of the truck and just say it's got to be metered and you have to follow our procedure if you're going to do this again. Well, you know, Ray, like I just said, you know, we don't know if it's, how you're going to prove that the truck was empty. And you only prove that that's its capacity. Yeah. But, like I said, they did, did call and leave a message stating that they took 1,500 gallons. So we charged them for 1,500 gallons. Whatever. I would right. use that to try to leverage um, their services as well, right? So if they're well, going to... Uh, that's the next, that's the next uh, discussion by the board about hydrant flushing. Um, I received a compliment at the last meeting from Brian about all the work I do, but I don't do all the work. Walt called Jason Olansky, a member of the Pownell Center Fire Company, and said, would you flush our hydrants? Pownell Fire Protective Association won't. And Jason said, no, we can't. Our insurance company told us too much liability. Uh, Walt or... Uh, Alex called Terry Morse and said, who flushes your hydrants? And Terry said, the fire department won't do it for us in Bennington anymore, blah, blah, blah. And then Terry gave Alex a number of a guy that he called and it was like $5,000 or some very large amount of money. <laughs> so Alex ran into um, Bruce Burrington and said, hey, you got a tanker that you, you know, and why don't, why don't you go ahead and, and talk about what you talk to Casey? Go ahead. You tell them what you told me. Well, I basically can't really add much more to what Ray just said. Trying well, to I find think the a, Casey Madison story is a good story. Or was that what yes. Walt did? Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Wrong person. No, I just basically what Ray said. One of the local farmers here who has a tanker truck. And I thought maybe that we could hire them for a reasonable fee. It would help somebody in the community make a few bucks and alleviate the problem we have because we've got several hydrants that need to be flushed and they're not getting flushed because I can't blow it out on people's lawn. You've know, you got to do it into a truck or else you create a flood in the neighborhood. I did flush the ones that I could that would go directly into a, a stream or a river or a storm drain. With that tanker, would you ostensibly be able to fill people's pools, too? Well, I don't think you'd want to off this truck. <laughs> 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 well, I would buy pool water for you guys. So just say, if you get in the truck, you get to my house, I want it. <laughs> <laughs> when, you do, when you do a flight, uh, a hybrid flush, I think it's mandated that you do a flow test at the same time. I could be here, I don't know. To see what pressure I have on those hydrants. Remember, we hired, uh, what's his name, a sprinkler guy to come down here and do it one year? Do a flow test on our hydrants? It, it's a simple thing to do. So when you open it up and you're flushing it out, and you just stick a meter in there and you, you get the, the little pressure. Of the, when we were trying to find a hydrant to put our expensive meter on, the water shot out 20 feet horizontal before it hit the ground. That's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it was coming out. You wouldn't want to put your hand in front of it. Not bad for the old boy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tell what Casey Madison said. Yeah, so uh, just to follow up on what Alex was saying the other day, I was going up uh, to get my annual manure supply for the garden there, and then I noticed uh, Strohmeyer's had a big tanker on the back of one of their flatbeds, and I stopped and I talked with Henry about doing it. And he seemed more than happy, you know, he'd be willing to help us out and stuff like that. You know, if he had the time, or he'd maybe even lend us the truck and really wasn't concerned about too much of a fee involved and stuff. And I started thinking about it. It's like, well, wait a minute. I was just serving the Powell community. It's like, I want to run it by, because I see uh, Casey Madison and the, the highway guys drive by my house every day. 
with a big calcium chloride tank that they use when they're grading and stuff. So I called up Casey and discussed it with him. He said he'd be more than happy, you know, to obviously help the community and provide us with that truck if we worked out at a time when they weren't grading. If you take the time to wash that tank out and stuff like that. So now at least it seems as though we do have a tank Some options. to flush, you know, to flush the, the hydrants out and stuff, you know, at, at minimal, if any, cost. You know, so I mean, that's, you know, we're, we're trying to, you know what I mean? We, we, we go out of our way to, to try to do this stuff too, you know what I mean? We're working to, to monitor our costs and minimize our costs and stuff like that. But it was very nice for, I thought for Casey to say, yeah, I'll clean that right up for you guys. You know, just give me a couple of days notice. He said, preferably on a rainy day, which, you know, hey, if we got to get a hose together and go out on a rainy day to do it, I mean, I'll do it, you know what I mean? But, um, you know, that was nice to at least have some cooperation from the town with regards to, you know, the maintenance of the system there. Yeah, it's just each hydrant on the end of the line anyway. So there's what, there's like four hydrants you need to flush? Yeah, you're, supposed you're, to, you're supposed to do them all. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. one other, there's 34 hydrants. And one other room, one other thing that Casey well, said. We used to always do them, remember? Twice a year? Remember? Yeah. But, all right. I might be wrong, but I think you only have to do it at the end of the line. The hydrant at the end of the line. Yeah, and then Casey had another good idea, too, with regards to dumping it on people's lawns. He said, well, geez, well, they said, did you ever think, knock on that person's door, and, that, and just explain to them, geez, we got to flush the hydrant. Would you mind if for one day, you know, we got a little water out there and stuff, and just see what they say. If they say yes, that's good, and if they say no, you know, that's good too, but it was nice to hear that option anyway. Yeah. So anyway, it was good to get some collaboration from the town with regards to that. So there will be ongoing, we just got to get these hydrants flushed. There's, some of them are like at low points, and the screen at the pump, 73 feet deep, there's a 120 mesh screen, but there is some fine black silt that comes in, so it accumulates as the water is used, so it just needs to be blown out. Uh, so we'll work on that. Um, we already had number 12 discussion about costs of online versus paper billing. Number 13 is other business. Uh, does anybody have any final comments? Yes. I got a question about the cleaning there. cleaning of the tank. The water tank. The water tank up there. It's done every five years. Five years. Yes. Now we should be coming up pretty close to having to clean it. We did it last summer. Oh, we did. Yeah. yeah we we've done it twice since Jack retired. Okay. Yeah. That's a big expense there. Wasn't it? That was twenty eight hundred dollars. Last time it was sixteen hundred. Yeah. But they had a frogman with a TV camera, and right. I went in, I mean, since I live right there, right. I looked down, there they are, and uh, it was pretty cool. And they gave us a CD, I mean, a fascinating CD, of uh, a DVD, you know. They're in there with a vacuum cleaner. You can see it all. And there were some questions, there was like drip lines. The top of the tank is like curved pieces of pie. And there's drip lines along the bottom of the tank that looked like leakage. So I called the guy who made the tank and he said, no, that's condensation. Since there's always water in there, water condenses and a little bit of lime is leached out of the concrete. He said the actual, and then you get up and walk around on top of the tank and there's cracks that show in the uh, gunite, you know, there's like a cement thing. But he said each of those seams is like a lap seam that goes down and goes up. So there's no leakage from outside. It's just dripping like in a cake, you know, stalactites. And it all vacuumed up. It wasn't hard. So it's good until 2019. Um, does anybody have any other business to discuss? I just ask what the so what's the process from here on in for about this? What's are you going to send out things we're to gonna, all the ratepayers? We're going to say that there's a vote. Yeah, I I think we're just going to have to discuss the procedure. Is going to be that we will send a 
letter to every rate payer or to landlords that have three, you know, three letters to distribute to their tenants. We don't know the names of all the tenants or all of the trailer owners um, or tenants. And it'll be at a date. I don't know whether we'll do it on our next meeting. July 4th is Saturday, so our next meeting will be July 6th. Or whether we'll call a special meeting. Or the board members will have to decide. But it will be announced on the front porch forum as well as letters, the same letters sent to the people. Just like I put the agenda, put it on the front porch forum. For What's this the, the I got it a little late. I just learned about this front porch form. What's the percentage? Like, I don't know how the voting process works. Does it need to be a certain percentage of the ratepayers uh, in comparison to the board members, or is it just ratepayers by itself? There is a discussion in the bylaws about emergency meetings. The Prudential Committee may hold emergency meetings at any time deemed necessary. If time allows, the warning shall be published in the Bennington Banner, which is kind of a dead issue these days, since not many people besides me reads it, and post it at the Solomon Wright Library, which we do. Um, if time does not allow, an officer will notify resident voters via mail or telephone at least 24 hours in advance. Um, there you go. Special meetings shall be warned upon the application of three or more voters of the fire district or 5% of the voters of the district, whichever is greater. This warning shall be the same as the warning for an annual meeting as follows. All annual meetings shall be warned by the clerk or any officer. A warning shall be published in the bidding of banner at the Solomon Wright Public Library and at one other place designated by the Prudential Committee and shall include a date, time, and agenda. The warning shall be posted as above no more than 40 days or no less than 30 days before the meeting. A signed dated copy shall be recorded and be on file in the office of the fire district. Non-resident users shall be notified by mail as above. Resident members may also be notified by mail as above. Um, now I'm looking at number seven, voting. Persons residing within the fire district who are voters in the town of Pownall shall be entitled to one vote on each matter submitted to a vote at a meeting of the fire district. So, number seven of our bylaws means you can vote Clarify on this. That. Yes, I'm a registered voter. I can vote with you folks. No, if you reside, there's a line around. I mean, I'm you're that. a rate payer. Okay. So as that, your business is in the line, but it's only people residing within the fire district, which is a line on a map. So his tenants can vote. I thought you said to be a registered to be a registered voter in the town hall. Yeah, within the within no, the perimeter. Voting. Not not no. Persons residing within the fire district who are voters in the town of Palmer. I am a voter in the town of Palmer. You're also a rate payer. And I'm also a rate payer. You vote as a rate payer, but not... Bill Bozzo can't vote in this. And Nelson Brownell can't vote in this. Only... But you have to be a voter and that you have to be... Oh a voter in the town of Palm. It's catch-22. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can't be crazy because I know I'm crazy. But I'm a registered voter and I'm a rate payer. So no, you're you're in. But I'm now thinking: Do we have to involve Karen Burrington, town clerk? There you go. This is catch twenty two. Good luck. Thank you. And it has to be thirty days now in advance. Three days. This is the thing before you want special special meetings. No, a special meeting. We could call this an emergency meeting. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. But how does it, what do you, how do you determine what the results are? Is there a percentage or is there a, I mean, I get that, you know, if everybody can vote, but is it a majority of the people that are here or a majority of the people that no, exist in the majority town? majority of or? the people who fill out a, a 
you got to come here and you got to prove you've got to be on the voting list. Mm -hmm. You also have to be so within have to the, the fire district. line of the fire the district, to, which I got a map of it somewhere, but it's yeah. just like a topographical map. Mm -hmm. it's tough. It's tough. So then if 10 people show up, just make this easy for Mike. Yeah, my brain. Six, six, <laughs> if, okay. if 10 people yeah, show six up, wins. then... Six wins. And, and you guys are not involved in, in the vote? It is strictly sure the rate payers and the... rate payers? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, vote. Okay, we're, so... We're vote, I'm registered to vote and I live within the fire district, so okay. I can vote, yeah. Okay, so there's the vote of the board, and then there's the vote of however many people show up that meet those credentials, and then it's a majority vote right. on where it goes from there. I think so. Yes. That makes Doesn't sense, that right? that make sure. sense? Yeah, I just wanted to clarify because I didn't know if there were any well, special you clarified bylaws because that I wasn't you know. aware of or something. <laughs> I don't know. So we and my wife for can't vote. vote for it. It's got to be one we're or the other. Right. Okay. We're because so we're one vote. hookup. Nobody ever showed. You're like me, the voters. Yeah. yeah. So we do. But can, but can, can your tenant votes? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's in the district. Makes sense. If they turn on the tap and get your water, they can they mm -hmm. vote. But they don't even have to have the water, it's just in the district, but correct? But Walt can't vote for his tenant, just no, like I can't vote for Jimmy right. or no, the president. his tenant could be here and vote. Yeah. yeah. But I can vote as well, even though I'm not on the water. Yes. If your name's on that billing list, you can be here. No, vote. if, you're no, if, you're if in your district. residence is within, like the Haley's that one vote. That opens up. <laughs> Yeah, he's got well, so he has a well. Well, <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. Uh, I, I second that motion. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, I guess I guess talk great. to Karen Burns. Thank you guys. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Right. Well, it was like, see you. Make sure I got your. We're still drinking out of all of our cups and.